Hello and welcome to today's lecture which is uh, a new topic. Uh, this is chapter 6 and today our discussion on chapter 6 is going to focus on trusses. So the outline is uh, as follows. Um, I'm going to define some basic um, uh, basic uh, structures that we will be working with during this uh, during this uh, uh, throughout this chapter, um, and then we will also focus on how to analyze equilibrium in these uh, different types of structures. So the first thing we want to begin with is to understand that thus far we have worked with rigid bodies, uh, which can be considered to be made up of one solid object. Uh, think about this structure right here. Uh, as you can see, it is made up of uh, a member that goes from A to D, and a member that goes from C to F, and another member that goes from B to E. Uh, and these are being joined together by um, the joints. It could be a nail, it could be um, a nut, uh, and so on. And so clearly, these are not. Uh, uh, this structure is not a conventional rigid body like we've been looking at because it is made up of uh, different parts. And so our question now is uh, what determines the equilibrium of the structure under an applied load, for example, um, under the load W, when you have a system made up of different parts? So um, the answer to that is that we now need to consider both external forces that we've been working with so far and also now include internal forces and um, and and when we when we start thinking about internal forces uh, one of the um, properties and uh, principles that will come in very handy is Newton's third law which states that uh, forces of action and reaction for bodies in contact are equal and we will see how this is implemented as we work through some problems that involve these kind of uh, 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 objects that, that are made from several parts. Uh, so remember that um, we still have to begin problem solving by looking at the free body diagram uh, of the entire body as the first step. And so if I look at uh, the structure here, I remove my uh, support, I remove my um, I remove its connection to uh, to the ground and I remove uh, the load and I'm left with the uh, free body diagram uh, and that is shown here and this is the free body diagram for the entire entire body right? and this free body diagram gives us only the external forces so the internal forces are then obtained by then freeing up each of the parts so for example um, AD uh, I free it up and I look at all the forces that are being applied uh, to it um, uh, similarly for uh, member CF it's freed up all the forces applied to it and so on and that gives us um, the free body diagram for each part and this is now needed so that we can find all the forces including the internal forces acting on this body so let's now look at uh, the three different types of um, of objects or force members that we are going to uh, consider in this chapter that are designed to take up load. Right? The first one is going to be the truss and um, an example is shown uh, here. Uh, this is a bridge uh, which is made up of uh, many different uh, many trusses. So this is a truss structure that extends uh, over a large area uh, and the idea of a truss is that it consists of, uh, of uh, parts that uh, are only subject to two forces and we will uh, we will look at this in a moment so the forces when we say two forces these are forces acting at the two ends of that part so that means you have a straight member and it's connected only at the ends and you have forces only acting at the ends and that's why it's called a two force member okay. the second type of um, object is the frame and here um, one of the members uh, of the object can be subject to more than two forces. So, in other words, uh, 
a member can be a multi-force member that is subject to uh, more than two forces and an example here is a bicycle frame uh, that is subject to uh, more than two forces you can think of this this one right here uh, it's subject to a force from from this bar uh, right here but it's also subject to the force due to um, um, uh, the rod that is holding your your chain and finally machines uh, machines are structures that contain moving parts an example is shown here uh, you've seen um, construction machines all around you um, uh, on the campus uh, so machines are structures that contain moving parts to transmit uh, and modify forces so we have trusses frames and machines so let's begin by looking in more detail at the truss so um, look at the structure here and pay careful attention to um, to what it looks like and uh, you can clearly see that uh, one this is uh, a rigid body that consists of uh, different parts we have part AC CD uh, AB or you can think of it as parts AC AD CD db and bc um, in this case a truss is uh, basically one which consists of these straight members uh, that are connected only at the joints and uh, and no member goes past the joint for example bc does not extend past this joint in either direction right and so that is the basic definition of a truss that they're joined uh, together um, at the joints and don't extend past the joint now um, uh, when you do when you create a structure like this uh, you're basically forcing the structure to be comprised only of single forces at the joints and so that means each member here is a two force member now um, within a truss if you look at each member um, the member can either be under tension that means the forces are pulling outwards like shown here or under compression where the forces are acting into the member now uh, one of the reasons we are going to spend a lot of time analyzing trusses is because they are one of the major engineering structures uh, around and that is because of their practical and economic um, 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 factors so you can clearly see that you know a truss uh, can support uh, large loads by simply these beams connected together in in an end-to-end -end fashion uh, at the joints, uh, and so clearly it's uh, it's it can be lightweight. It saves the amount of material to be used, and so that's why they are very very um, uh, practical uh, choices when we are making uh, large structures. Uh, in the example of this bridge here. Um, uh, of course, we have a, uh, a truss structure shown here and here on the sides, but uh, the load of the bridge is then uh, supported by this frame that is attached to the structure, the truss structure at these joints here. Okay. And so the load is actually delivered to the truss through these joints, um, um, and that's how the truss ends up uh, being able to withstand the load. So here's a close-up of a, of, a, of a bridge showing a truss structure on the joints. Uh, you can see that uh, the joints can be a rivet joint or nuts or anything else um, that holds uh, the truss uh, joint together. Uh, in this figure, you can see um, a variety of different types of trusses, uh, of trusses and um, one thing uh, uh, that is important to remember is that a truss member, that means one of the rods in the truss, uh, these are not designed to take large lateral ro loads. That means if I push from the side, they're not designed to be uh, taking those kind of loads. And, uh, and the structure should be used in such a way that uh, the loads are only applied at the joints. Right? And um, the other thing to remember is that the weight of each member in the truss um, um, is applied at the joints and uh, and so uh, another uh, another way to think about it is that half of the weight appears at each of the two joints 
so looking at this image here uh, from top to bottom you can see that there are a variety of different types of truss geometries uh, based on the function they play and also based on uh, the inventor so for example the top row consists of trusses that are typically found on roofs um, uh, this set here are trusses that are typically found on bridges and besides that there are uh, a set of trusses that you find in other applications here yeah. so go through this and you know uh, uh, it will be a good uh, good exercise to kind of uh, look at some of the truss structures that you see around you when you drive from home to work or uh, or you know um, or in other situations and see if you can compare it to uh, one of these type of structures okay let's now focus in on something called the simple truss so uh, let's think about uh, a thought experiment here and we'll focus on this structure that consists of four members a b b c uh, C D and A D okay. and we apply load to B. So uh, it turns out that in a structure like this um, you know applying load to B can easily collapse the structure and uh, you can you can actually try this at home by taking uh, four matchsticks and gluing them together in this uh, original uh, trapezoid shape here and pushing down and B you'll see that the structure can break quite easily. On the other hand, uh, if you think about this triangular truss structure here, made up of only three members, uh, it turns out that now when you apply the force at B, it's much harder to deform this structure. And, and this is the reason uh, why trusses uh, are typically in triangular shape and also why the triangle is one of the uh, one of the most basic load bearing shapes that you will see all around you um, again you can try this at home you know take matchsticks glue them together and compare these two shapes in terms of the load you need to apply to to actually break the structure it turns out that in the triangle the only way deformation can take place is if there is actually a decrease in length of each of the members so uh, with that introduction to you know how a truss can take up load uh, qualitatively uh, let's define simple truss so simple truss is a large rigid truss, truss structure uh, like that shown here that is made by adding members to make new triangles using existing joints so i start with uh, the original truss abc and then i add two new members bd and, and cd and I create a new joint uh, at D. And so a simple truss is is, is a structure that consists of uh, consists of uh, this type of uh, um, uh, structure. And it turns out that um, if you actually write down the total number of members M in terms of the number of joints uh, that you're creating, the equation for a simple truss is going to look like this: M equals two N minus one. Uh, and so you, you um, if you look at the case here, we have uh, we have one, two, three, four, five members, and uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, um, a total um, uh, joints. But remember, we have to start from uh, from from the first truss. So we remove um, anything that belongs to the first the first truss here to cal for this calculation so that means I'm going to remove all of these and now what we're left behind is with two members and uh, and one joint so m equals two and uh, so, and um, uh, or you can say that uh, n equals one so m equals two into one minus one equals one So let's look at the definition of a simple truss. So um, if we start with one triangle here, ABC, we can construct a larger rigid truss by adding two new members to it, BD and BC, uh, sorry, BD and CD, and one new joint, D. And so this is exactly how a simple truss is connected. You add two new members and one joint in order to make up 
um, a larger structure. So the equation that relates the number of members to the number of joints in the truss, uh, where uh, let's say the number of members is m and the number of joints is n, is going to be given by this equation m equals 2n minus 3. And so to try that out, look at this triangle here. Let's count the number of joints we have. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So according to our equation, we should have m equals 2 times 4 minus 3. So that is 5. And so let's see if that is correct. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so we see that m equals 2n minus 3, uh, when that is satisfied, is going to make up a simple truss. On the other hand, look at the structure here. Uh, this is also a rigid truss, but now it does not have only triangles. And you can check to see uh, how many joints it has. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 joints. And so according to our equation here, m equals 14 minus 3 equals 11. So let's see if that is satisfied. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So again, this is a simple truss, but the point here is that it does not have to have only triangles. So this is something to keep in mind as we uh, go ahead to analyze uh, trusses. So let's now turn these um, these understandings into analyzing structures. So let's begin with this example here, uh, where uh, we've shown two types of uh, trusses, and one is known as the K truss, and another is known as the Baltimore truss. Um, uh, Baltimore truss. And if you go back to that image which had a whole bunch of trusses, you will see both of these are there. Um, you will also see something known as the Fink truss. And it turns out that the Fink and Baltimore trusses are not simple trusses because uh, of the fact that they cannot be constructed um, uh, as per the definition we laid out for a simple truss. That means you successively add two new members and create one joint uh, as you create the simple, simple truss. In other words, this equation here, m equals uh, 2n minus 1, is not satisfied. So... Um, if we think about that and uh, look at these two trusses, um, uh, we should be able to show that the K truss, which is this one here, is actually a simple truss, while the Baltimore truss is not. And so how, how can we go about doing this? Well, the trick here is to, um, is to start at one triangle and then work your way throughout the structure. So as a hint, uh, in order to do it for the K truss, you know, you can start with, uh, let's say, this triangle here and look at this side. And we know that both sides are symmetric, so you can just look at this side and make sure that uh, as you build it, you're only adding two members and one um, uh, uh, and one joint as you go through. So, for example, this triangle here, you've added a member here, here, and one joint. Uh, and uh, in the next triangle, um, uh, and you look at the bottom one here, the same thing. Uh, and then I look at the next triangle here. Uh, I've had it one, two, and then I've added one, two, added one, two, one, two, one, two. And so um, this, uh, this uh, tells you that uh, we are basically creating um, a simple truss. On the other hand, if you look at the Baltimore and you work uh, and you start from here, you'll quickly see that that's uh, that's uh, actually not the case. So um, work through this uh, and convince yourself that uh, the Baltimore is not a simple truss, while the K truss is. Now, in terms of quantifying equilibrium in trusses, uh, what we are going to do is use something called the method of joints. And uh, what this is, is that it is a two-step process to find all external and internal forces. So, um, step one is, is something that we apply to rigid bodies in general. So, we first begin by creating the FBD of the entire truss. 
and then use equilibrium equations to find uh, the reaction forces and moments. So remember the equilibrium equations we're talking about here are all the sigma f's, right? Uh, and all the sigma m's and these are all zero right so that's the equilibrium reaction we're talking about here so in the case of um, the truss we'll start out by first creating a free body diagram as shown here uh, and then find equilibrium at these different um, uh, 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 at these different uh, reactions then step two in the method of joints is now to free up each of the members and and, uh, and apply the free body diagram uh, and then using um, uh, using triangle laws uh, uh, and geometry along with Newton's third law you find all the forces through each of the members and uh, and so uh, to best understand this let's work on an example problem uh, so that uh, this this method can become uh, comfortable to you so the question here is, uh, you know, you have a truss that is provided. It is a joint at C. It's a rigid joint. We have a roller joint at E. We have loads applied at A and B. And the idea here is now to determine the force in each member of the truss. So um, my suggestion is to pause here, uh, go back and listen to a method, method of joints analysis, and then see if you can work through this problem by yourself. And then uh, you can unpause the video and come back to see how the solution plays out. So let's begin with uh, step one. So step one, remember step one was to draw the free body diagram of the entire truss and then apply equilibrium conditions to find the various reaction forces. And so uh, that's what I've done here in this figure. We freed it up from the joints at C and E. So at E we have, since it's a roller joint, we only have a force along the y direction. And at C, we have a rigid joint, so we have forces along uh, X and Y, CX and CY. And now I'm going to begin by writing down the equilibrium conditions. So for convenience, I'm going to find the moment about point C because I have two forces here. So that's uh, point C. And I write down uh, um, the moment for each of the forces A, which is 2000 times 24, B, which is 1000 times 12, and E, which is going to be... Um, uh, uh, the value of E which is unknown times the distance here which is 6 feet and this gives us the value of E to be 10,000 pounds. Next I'm going to apply the uh, equilibrium of the forces sigma Fx equals 0 and sigma Fy equals 0 and when you do this you find that uh, Cx has to be 0 because the truss is not moving in the x direction uh, while sigma y, uh, Fy equals 0 gives us uh, Cy to be negative 7,000 pounds. And that means uh, uh, in reality the force Cy is actually acting downwards. Yeah. Okay, so, so now we have completed the free body diagram of the entire truss. And step 2 now is basically to draw the free body diagram of the individual members and to find the internal forces. So as an example, I'm going to do it for the joint A here. So remember the joint A is, is this one right here. And we are now going to look at joint A and analyze it for its equilibrium. So I have the load uh, being applied at joint A. I have a member connected uh, between A and B. And I have another member connected between A and D. So now think about uh, vectors and our idea of equilibrium. We know that uh, vector, three vectors as in, are in equilibrium uh, if they form a closed loop. And so that's the idea we're applying here. We're going to form the closed loop with the load uh, mem force uh, into member AB, FAB, and force member AD, which is FAD. And so uh, based on that um, and, uh, and the fact that we are actually uh, given uh, the magnitudes of these dimensions here. So we're going to look at the, we are doing something like this. And so we put the uh, put the dimension values here for each of the uh, each of the cases. So um, uh, three is along uh, AB, uh, four along uh, uh, the A uh, for the A axis along A, A direction uh, the the Y uh, AY uh, direction, and five is this hypotenuse. And so then we can um, basically uh, proportion out um, 
the various side lengths based on the fact that we have that uh, triangle dimension uh, and that leads us to the fact that FAB is 1500 pounds acts in tension and FAC is 2500 pounds and that acts in compression. So we can similarly solve for forces at all other joints. Uh, FDB you'll find uh, you should be able to find these uh, values here for each of the cases. Uh, these are uh, forces uh, along the members while these are uh, reaction forces. And then um, as a double check to see if you worked uh, the problem correctly, you should find uh, uh, whether your forces that you found satisfy these conditions here. The sigma fx equals 0 and sigma fy equals 0. Okay, so let's wrap up this, uh, this chapter now uh, or this discussion uh, for today. So we learned that uh, interconnected bodies in equilibrium require us both uh, to consider both the external and internal forces and Newton's third law uh, is going to help us explain the internal forces acting on the individual members. We learned that there are three types of structures with internal and external forces, the trusses, um, uh, multi-force members, frames and machines. And a simple uh, rigid truss like the one shown here is made by adding, uh, starting with one truss triangle and then adding two members and one joint. And, and then that's the end of today's uh, lecture. Please go through it. Take your time to pause at each section and uh, work through the exercise problems. Uh, and that way um, uh, you should be able to uh, understand what we've talked about today.